Believe it or not, I almost forgot to grab the camera. I was so excited. But this week, guys, we had a big shipment. One of the big key pieces arrived finally for the Waterbox 180. Let's just go on and start opening up some boxes. There we go. Nothing like seeing a bunch of boxes at your doorstep. So before I start, I thought I'd mentioned this box had all of that in here. And it was pretty much, it would come to about here. And then from here up, it was packed with a bunch of these little bags with air in them. I found it very interesting as uh, that's a pretty interesting way of packing stuff. They literally just threw stuff in here and use this to fill the top of it. I mean, I guess for PVC, it really doesn't matter, but we are very close to damaging the Eheim heater. Luckily, I opened it up already. It seems to be in good condition, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. The other thing that actually really, really surprised me is the I got the uh, booster pump, the booster pump kit that they sell. Uh, this is the Aquatech. And I'm not even kidding you. This thing was literally just thrown in there, and I don't see any remnants of any box whatsoever. Luckily, this thing, again, this one here is super heavy duty. Oh, look, it's in Irvine. I could have went and picked this thing up myself. Yeah, Irvine is like 25, 30 minutes away from me. Wow, you'd think it'd come boxed up. But nonetheless, everything's good. We got our upgrade kit for our RODI. I think this increases it. I think it's 150 gallons per day. We got that. We got whole replacement filters. Another thing we also ended up getting, let me open up the box. It's going to be a little bit easier to see outside the box. And that's this BRS Triple DI Saver. Also comes with a inline TDS meter. Oh, wow. That's very interesting. It is a, to oh, wow. So it records the TDS he here, here, and here. I'd never seen that, but you could see it's one, two, three line. Huh, very interesting. I wasn't even aware of that. But yeah, this is here to obviously make better quality RODI water where I live. I think I checked my TDS last time, my tap water. Believe it or not, it was close to 500. I'm going to be planning to run uh, three of these. So three mixed bed resins. That's one. Two, three. I also did some research and found that my local water has uh, chlor uh, chloramines, I believe. Yeah, chloramines. Yep, there it is right there. So I am actually going to be running two stages of carbon blocks. Some of you may say it's overkill, but you know, with my plans for the tank, I figure you can never be too safe. And then I think the sediment here is one micron. So this probably is gonna have to be replaced quite a bit. Uh, obviously the lower you go in micron is the more uh, contaminants it'll filter out, but it's also gonna clog up a little bit quicker, but no big deal. These things don't cost a lot of money. I don't mind replacing those. The rest is the CPEX valves. Tons of people rave about these valves. They also have a union on them. So they make, it very, they make them very serviceable. Not only that, these valves, after years and years and years of being in a tank, they'll still be really easy to open and close. The rest is uh, Schedule 80 elbows. Oh, this is for the UV sterilizer. Good thing I got that. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much all the fittings. I also got some colored uh, plumbing that's here we'll open that in a little bit here to show you guys we should have a total of five of the one inch and two of the i think this is an inch and a quarter i want to say wow that's gonna look beautiful it's totally gonna match the bashi with the gray and the blue also gonna match my ecotech my delua skimmer and my ghl which is also blue uh, blue and white blue and gray theme now that we have the unboxing out of the way, this week I also went ahead and custom built the stand for the mixing stations. You guys know I've mentioned it a few times. I'm going to have two 50 gallon containers, obviously mounted next, next to my RODI unit, my utility sink. So I went ahead this week and custom made it with two by fours, a half inch plywood sheeting on the very top, sanded it, filled it, painted it, made it look as nice as I could, and I'm very happy with it. Before I show you how I did put it together, this is the finished product. I'm happy. All I did was really focus on the front of it as far as filling it, making it look as presentable as I could. But you can see, it was very easy to do. It'll easily hold, I think, the six, 700 pounds that both containers are gonna weigh. Also made it high enough to hold my Tropic Marin salt on the bottom. So let's take you guys behind the scenes and show you guys how this thing came together. Before we do go and jump into that, I also wanna give you guys a quick update on the quarantine tank. This thing's been running for, I'd say, what, uh, about seven days now. 
I'm having a minor issue in the cycle. Uh, for some reason, I can't get the cycle to kick off. I'm probably gonna save that for another video because again, we have so much to cover in this week, but just thought I'd give you guys an update here on the quarantine tank. You guys can see that came together really easily really didn't take that much work and again I tried to sand everything down and I try to really focus my attention to the front to make it look as nice as possible you'll see a little bit later I add filler so when it is painted everything fits nice and neat now one thing I did show you guys it actually took me two tries to cut these legs the first time I noticed I cut them way too short the Tropic Marin salt bucket did not fit inside so I had to redo that make it higher so the buckets could fit inside Put a solid coat of paint down pretty happy just going to let this dry you know then we're going to flip it over do the front side typically i like to do the front at the end because that's what is really visible but all in all i'm very happy with it so guys that's going to conclude this week i know we covered a bit we unboxed what arrived from brs i show you guys how i put together the DIY stand for the mixing station, as well as a mini update on the quarantine tank the good news is i can honestly say there's one uh not one piece, but one big shipment missing to get this water box 180 running. And that's an Ecotech shipment. That shipment's gonna include uh, three XR30 G5s. It's gonna include two MP40s, one Vectra L2, and I think that's about it. So that's gonna be the last pieces I am missing. The good thing, I spoke to Ecotech this week and they're gonna be shipping them out this coming week. So I think within the next 10 days, realistically, we should have them here. In a way, I'm kind of happy they're not here yet because with plumbing, as you guys know, it's not something that happens overnight. The way I like to do my plumbing, I like to really plan it. Because once you do this, it's very hard to redo it again in the future, especially once you have water and equipment down in the sump. So I'm gonna make sure I plan everything out, make sure I'm happy how everything is, make sure it's more importantly modular and something that can be adapted in the future. If I add or take off equipment, it could easily be modified. Aside from that, you guys have no idea how excited I am to get this tank running. I know a lot of people in the comments have been saying, how long is it gonna take? You know, you're taking forever. Trust me guys, I really wish everything was all here at once. But at the same time, I'm really taking my time because a tank this size, I mean really any size tank, once you set them up, it's very difficult to put stuff in, remove stuff. It just takes a lot of work. So it's very important that you plan ahead, set it up right the first time, so later you're not having to tinker around with it. That's gonna be pretty much it. I got a lot of work ahead of me. I have the whole plumbing to worry about, the whole mixing station to worry about. And then I'm gonna have to, or actually I'm gonna be making a video on, I'm going to be using the XR30 lights, but I'm not gonna be using the Radeon mounts. I'm gonna be doing uh, my very own 8020 mounts. I'm sure you guys have seen Reef Dudes do them. So I'm gonna be bringing you guys along, showing you guys how I do that, but that's gonna be about another thing I'm gonna have to install before the tank is running. So guys, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. If you guys stay to the very end to watch this video, I'd love to see who you are. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know who you are and if you watch to the very end. And yeah, guys, we're gonna leave this video here. I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing. Man, where do I start now with all this stuff? Just a whole bunch of stuff to do now. Man.